The problems and pressures on our soldiers and veterans are the subject of a new movie starring Charles Dutton called Least Among Saints. He stopped by our Washington Watch studio last week. All right, big screen, small screen, Broadway. I mean, look, you, you act anywhere. So, uh, you, so, so, you, so you came to D.C. Uh, you're promoting this new film of yours, Least Among Saints. Uh, and so we're going to talk about that, but first, let's actually show a clip. So, Sergeant Hayworth, you served multiple tours of duty. You were hit by some IEDs. Well, we have a very good therapy program here at the base. I just want my discharge. Been away again? Yes, sir. Where you been? A few places I can't pronounce. Next time you're going to jail. You never came back. I'm here. You never came back to me. How come you sleep out here? You see me sleeping out here? Yeah, in your sleep. Bad dreams. What's going to happen to him? His father's whereabouts are unknown. He'll be taken into protective custody, determine what's in the best interest of the child. Hey! I won't let them take me away! You can't make me! You can come home with me. We'll figure this thing out, okay? Find him, bring him in, get you the kid back. First of all, we talk a lot on this show mm -hmm. about military uh, veterans and their families. Uh, and this movie really deals with soldiers having to come home and the life they have to confront after being on the battlefield. Absolutely. I mean, it's so pertinent for today because it's a stark reminder of what the government doesn't do for returning vets. And it's a bleak uh, example of what they should be doing, you know, for returning vets because I'm, a, I'm amazed at the lack of interest that we show the, the Afghanistan and the Iraqi returning vets. Uh, see, here's what amazes me, is that we have folks who talk about our troops, and they yes. talk about mm -hmm. democracy and supporting our troops, and, and, and folks clap for them walking yes, through airports yes, yes, and things yes. along those mm -hmm. lines. Um, but I always say the rubber meets the road when they are no longer fighting. Absolutely. Then what, you know, what will America do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. troops? Are we as supportive of them? And I think, frankly, it's sort of like, okay, out of sight, out of mind. Well, you know, there, 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 there is a side of the political spectrum who loves to say, let's take them to war, let's, 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 let's go to war, but no one's talking about what happens when they return. And, um, and, that's, and that's a major problem. The reason, after I read this script, mm -hmm. and the reason I wanted to be part of it is because it reminded me of so many of my family members mm -hmm. who were Vietnam vets and a lot of friend, buddies of mine who were Vietnam vets who were facing those same kind of things 30, 35, 40 years ago. And so the character that I play in the film is a Vietnam vet who understands this young man's plight mm -hmm. because that was him in the 1970s when he returned. So um, it's a very moving, poignant portrayal of, of a vet trying to get it back together and with doors being slammed in his face and he learns to discover or rediscover his humanity by taking care of a child who lives next door to him and becoming a surrogate father. So a very moving story, very moving story. Um, what has been the response from veterans groups? Have, have they been oh, amazing, amazing, yes, it? yes, amazing response for, from veteran gr groups all over the country. And, um, and it's, it, it was an independent film. It wasn't a big studio picture. It was an independent film, uh, low budget, and the cast came together not out of money, but it was great material, and it was on the page. You didn't have to invent anything to be an actor. You know, it was, it, the story was on the page, so it was easy to do. For you, when, when you are looking at a script, mm -hmm. when things are coming across your desk, what jumps out at you? Well, you know, I, I kind of drew my line in the sand early on in my career, Roland, where don't even mail me any buffoonery. Don't even mail me any silly stuff. You know, don't even send it my way. I've always... Yeah, when was the last comedy we saw you in? <laughs> I mean, we, we, have no, you done any comedies no, before? No, no, it's not that I won't do a comedy. I have one on, on the air, you okay, know? Right. So it's not that I won't do a comedy, <laughs> uh, but, but, but I won't do certain kind of stuff, certain right. comedies, you know what I mean? I, I want to be able to be in my living room or kitchen 10, 15 years from now, and, and if I see a rerun of a show, I'm not embarrassed by it. 
So I, I think that into my choices. But I'm also from the theater. Mm -hmm. I started in the theater, so I'm used to reading and doing and performing great literature and great characters. So when I get a script, I try to find out, does this advance civilization as an artist, mm -hmm. or is it just commercial? Sometimes you do stuff to pay the rent. And then, you know, I have, I have, I have a theory. An entertainer will do anything. An actor will do most things. But an artist will only do those things that he or she feels advances civilization.